I'm Tisha Bader with Shalom TV's news update for Thursday, July the 18th, 2013. Reuters reports citing a Palestinian official today that the Palestine Liberation Organization has decided to defer its decision on renewing peace talks with Israel, insisting that Israel first meet Palestinian preconditions. The Times of Israel reports citing a senior Palestinian source that PLO leadership decided in principle to return to peace talks on the condition that the U.S. specifies that those talks would be for the establishment of a Palestinian state based on the pre-1967 borders. The other conditions, like the issue of Palestinian refugees and a freeze in settlement construction, could be addressed later. Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas had briefed PLO leaders in Ramallah today on his meetings this week with U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry and Ynet reports citing Palestinian sources that Abbas received unanimous support for Kerry's outline for peace talks from the Fatah Central Committee, but that the executive committee of the PLO couldn't come to an agreement and decided to delay its answer, with reports of a possible committee meeting to discuss the matter further tomorrow. Meanwhile, U.S. State Department spokeswoman Jen Psaki told reporters today that there are no plans at the moment for an announcement on the resumption of peace talks. And as you may have seen on IBA News, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's office denied earlier reports that Netanyahu had agreed to resume negotiations with the Palestinians based on the 67 lines with agreed land swaps. Ireland and Nepal will be sending troops to the UNDOF, the United Nations peacekeeping force in the Golan Heights, to help fill in the gap recently left by countries like Austria, whose troops left the region over the spillover of violence from Syria's civil war. Ireland is set to send 114 peacekeepers, and Nepal is said to be transferring some of its company of troops from the UN's peacekeeping force in Lebanon to the Golan region along the Israeli-Syrian border. The UNDOF has been in place in the area to help monitor the truce between Israel and Syria, put into place after the Yom Kippur War of 1973. The Times of Israel reports that Polish ambassador to the European Union, Marek Prada, said today that his country's Prime Minister, Donald Tusk, would be setting up a committee to investigate whether it's possible to reestablish ritual slaughter in Poland. This follows a bill to reinstate ritual slaughter affecting both Jews and Muslims, which was voted down last week. Prada made the announcement following a meeting with the general director of the European Jewish Association, Rabbi Menachem Margolin, on Tuesday. Margolin said that the Polish parliament's decision to reject the Shechita bill last week stemmed from its desire to protect animal rights, but that, quote, once the Polish government understood that this is seen as an action against the Jews, it decided to find a solution. Memorial services were held today in Argentina, the U.S., and Israel to mark the 19th anniversary of the bombing attack on the Argentine-Israelite Mutual Association building in Buenos Aires. On July the 18th, 1994, 85 people were killed and more than 300 wounded when a van loaded with explosives was detonated in front of the Jewish community center in Argentina's capital. It's widely believed that Hezbollah, with the backing of Iran, was behind the attack. However, no one has ever been convicted. In January of this year, Argentina agreed to form a truth commission with Iran to look into the bombing, a move which many in the Jewish world found troubling. B'nai B'rith International said this week they are concerned that the pact between Argentina and Iran, that with the pact, justice may never be served. The organization's executive vice president, Daniel Mariashin, said the Argentinians have essentially agreed to a murder investigation with the killer as a co-detective. This, quote, commission, he said, won't produce any meaningful results, and this sham of an agreement is the ultimate mark of disrespect against the victims and their families. Two Israeli archaeologists say they have found the remains of a palace that belonged to King David. Professor Yossi Garfinkel of the Hebrew University of Jerusalem and Sa'ar Ganor of the Israel Antiquities Authority said the discovery was made at Kirbet Kafia near Beit Shemesh, southwest of Jerusalem, believed by some to be the site of the fortified Judean city of Sha'arayim. 
Excavation at the site has been ongoing for the past seven years, with two structures being discovered there this past year. And the archaeologist today identified one of those structures as being David's palace and the other as a massive royal storeroom. The two buildings are the largest structures standing during the 10th century BCE to have been found in the territory of the Kingdom of Judah. And finally today, Israel's President Shimon Peres met today in Jerusalem with New York Knicks forward Amari Stoudemire and encouraged him to play for Israel's national team. As we reported to you earlier this week, Stoudemire, who has Jewish roots on his mother's side, is in, is in Israel coaching the Canadian basketball team at this year's Maccabi Games, which began in Jerusalem tonight. Aside from inviting him to play for Israel, Paris met with Stoudemire to discuss the players' charity efforts. And that's Shalom TV's news update for Thursday, July the 18th, 2013. I'm Tisha Bader.